Hi everybody, welcome to Bowtie Teacher. I'm still really sick, so apologies for the voice, but I'm going to try and go through June 2019, Paper 2HR for the IGCSE and give you an insight into how I would go about answering these questions. Okay, so question one is working an, out, working an estimate for the mean height from grouped frequency. So we know that we need to find the midpoint. That will be our x column. So 95, 105, 115, 125, and 135. And then we do fx in this column here. So let's work these out. 8 times 95, 12 times 105. 15 times 115, 10 times 125, didn't need to do that one, <laughs> and 3 times 135. Add them all together. is 5,400. And then we divide the total from fx by the total frequency, which is usually in the question. So divide by 48, 112.5. So that's an estimate for the mean. Let's just see if that makes sense. 8, 12, 15. So the median would be roughly around here. And that's kind of in there as well for the mean, because it's kind of an even spread around that. So yeah, that kind of makes sense. Use ruler and compasses to construct the perpendicular bisector. So I'll just sketch this, but you would use your compass and you would put your compass point on this corner and make sure that your compass is open to more than halfway, otherwise your arcs won't intersect. And they'll do something like that. And then you put on the other side, keep it the exact same width. And they would intersect like that. And then you would connect those with a ruler and it would go through the middle. Obviously <laughs> mine doesn't, but they would they would do that exactly right if you've used your compass correctly. Okay, sets. Explain why A intersection B is an empty set. So if you look at A and B, there are no no numbers that are in both. So you would write some sort of sentence to explain that um all of the numbers in A and B, none of them are the same. X is the elements within the universal set, and X does not have any A union B. So we have to look at the universal set, which are these numbers here, and X is not a member of A union B. So A union B is A or B. So X cannot be in A or B. So we look through those numbers and the only ones that are not in A or B is 1 and 9. Okay, set C. So the first piece of information says that A union B union C is everything. So if we draw our circles, there's nothing in the box that are outside the circles. That's what that's saying. So everything is in A, B, or C. So A was 2, 3, 5, and 7, I think. Yep, 4, 6, 8, and 10 for B. 4, 6, 8, 10. We'll start with that. And it says A intersection C has the number 2 in it. So the 2 must be there because it can't go in the middle because there's no numbers that are in A or union B. So, uh, sorry, A intersection B. So there's nothing in there. So it has to go there. And then. B 
and not C is 4, 6, and 10. So there's B. To be in B but not C has to uh, be in this area here. So B but not C is 4, 6, and 10. So that means that 6, uh, sorry, 8 must be here because 4, 6, and 10 are in the blue area. And so 8 must be in that intersection there. And that leaves two numbers there, 2, 8, and 1, and 9, because there's no numbers that are outside the circles. So list all the members of set C. That would be 1, 2, 8, and 9. Hopefully you can follow the logic there of, of the set notation. Question four, a cylinder has diameter 14 centimeters. Well, we never work with the diameter. The radius is seven and it wants the volume and we're given the height. So the volume is pi r squared h. So pi times seven squared times 20. And it wants that to three significant figures. So 49 times 20 times pi is 3,078.76. So to three significant figures, that would be 3,080 centimeters cubed. Josh buys and sells books. He buys 120 books for four pounds each. And then you need the profit. So we're gonna to need to work out how much he spent initially. 120 books times four pounds each is 480 pounds. Half of the books, that's 60, he sells for five pounds. So he's made back 300 already. 40% of the books, so 10% is 12 times 4 is 48 books at £7 each. And the rest of the books, that's 12, he sells for 8. That's £96. And 7 times 48 is 336. So this is how much he spent. This is how much he gained back. So 300 plus 336 plus 96 is 732. So to work out the profit is the difference minus 480 divided by the original amount that he paid and times by 100. So 732 minus 480 divided by 480 times 100. It's 52.5%. Okay. One book that Josh owns had a value of 15 pounds on the 1st of May 2019 value of this book had increased 20% in the last year, find the value on 2018. So this is a kind of reverse percentage. 15 pounds is 120%, 1.20 of the original price. So X will be 15 divided by 1.20. 15 divided by 1.2 is 12.5. So the value of the book is 12 pounds 50 pence. A, B, C and D, E, F are similar triangles. So we're going to try and find a side that's common in both, that's these two, and we can work out the scale factor 15 over 6 is 2.5. So this one is 
2.5 times bigger. To work out the length of DF, so that one, 4.2 times 2.5. Twenty one over two, ten point five, and then work out the length of BC. So we're going to need that one, and we're going to divide it by two point five to give seven point eight. Okay, so whenever you see the word similar, that's probably going to be scale factors. Thirty students in the class sat a math tests. Okay, so this is weighted means here. So we need to find out the total uh, amount of marks. Thirty students. The average was twenty six point eight. So the total mark would have been thirty times twenty six point eight, which is eight hundred and four. Thirteen of the students were boys, and their mean mark was twenty five. So the thirteen boys. Multiplied by their mean is 325, is it? Uh, 13 times 25. Yep. So that leaves for the girls 804 minus 325. So the girls scored 479 marks in total. And there are 30 students, 13 are boys. So we're going to divide that by 17 girls. And to 3SF, that will be 28.2. Okay, so if the boys' mark on average was 25 and the class was 26.8, then the girls must have been higher than the 26.8 to pull out the marks of the boys there. So that kind of makes sense. Change the speed of x kilometers per hour into meters per second so we're going to need to change x kilometers into meters so multiplied by a thousand that's now meters per hour and then we divide by 60 to get meters per minute divide by another 60 meters per second so we're doing x times a thousand, a thousand x divided by 60. And if you divide by 60 again, then you're just doing 60 times 60 there. So a thousand x over 60 times 60 is 3,600. Cancel this and that divides by two we get 5x over 18. Simultaneous equations, no quadratics here, so we just need to make one of the terms equal or we can substitute. So I'm gonna try and substitute this. So I'm gonna make y the subject of the second equation. So I've just rearranged that to make y the subject. And now I can substitute that into the first one equals minus 0 0.5. So x plus 6x minus 32 equals minus 0 0.5. 7x equals minus 0 0.5 plus 32 is 31.5 x equals 31.5 over 7, which is 4.5, and our y is equal to 3x minus 16. So 12, 13.5, is it? 13.5 uh, minus 16 is minus 2.8. Yeah, minus 2.5. Remember, you can check this on your calculator because you've got a simultaneous equation button. If you go down to um, equation function, which is option A, option one is simultaneous equation and number of unknowns is two. And I'm going to do one for x, two for y, minus 
and then 3 for x, minus 1 for y, and 16. So x is 9 over 2, that's 4.5, and minus 5 over 2 is minus 2.5 for y. So that's kind of handy there if you've got the class with y calculator. Question 10, straight line has gradient 5 and passes through these points. So this is on, this is actually 0, comma, uh, negative 3, sorry, so negative 3. So that's the y-intercept, and it's told you the gradient is 5. So this is just going to be y equals m, 5, x, y equals mx, plus c, or c is minus 3. A region is bounded by four straight lines. Write down the inequalities that define R. So let's see. This line here is x equals 2. This line here is y equals 3. And y equals 1. And this one here is x equals 0. So it's between 0 and 2 on the x, and between 1 and 3 on the y. That will give you anything in that shaded region. So we need to write that some inequalities. So we can say 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 2, and 1 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 3. Um, the reason I chose less than or equal to is because the, the lines around these are full lines, like solid lines as opposed to dashed lines. And if they were dashed, I'd use less than. Question 11 is standard form. Find the difference between Barcelona there and Monaco. So the difference 7.7 .7 times 10 to the 4 minus 9.5 times 10 to the 3. So I would write those out in full, 7, 7, 0, 0, 0, and 9.5 times 10 to the 3, that's 9, 5, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3. Subtract those. Give your answer in standard form, 6.75 times 10 to the 4. And check that on the calculator, 7.7 .7 times 10 to the 4 minus 9.5 times 10 to the 3. Six, six, yeah, that works out. Antonio says the average crowd it's approximately 50 times that for Oxford for Chelsea. So Oxford and Chelsea. Oxford is 8,300, 1, 2, 3, and Chelsea is 42,000. So yeah, Chelsea is not even 10 times the amount of Oxford. So I would say no to that one and put some numbers in to back that up. Cpron United increased by 15% and then decreased by 8%. So some of you might think, oh, well, that's just a 7% increase. But if you think of the number 100 and you increase it by 15%, that goes to 115. And then you would work out 8% of this and then subtract it. And 8% of 115, when you take it off, does not give you does not give you 107. So that doesn't work. So how do I go from 100 to 115? I multiply by 1.15 as a decimal. And if I want to decrease something by 8%, I multiply it by 92%, okay, which is 100 minus 8%. So 0.92. So whatever I start with, I then multiply it by 1.15 and then multiply it by 0.92. So that is a multiple of 1.058. Okay, so if I times that by 100, 
you get 105.8. Okay, so that's the percent of the original, 105.8%. So as a percentage change, I would take 100% off of that and get my 5.8% increase overall. A, B, C, D is a trapezium. Calculate the perimeter. So what don't we know yet? Well, we know we know up to that length there is 21.2, but we don't know that, and we don't know this. So if we split this into a right triangle here, then we can use trigonometry or Pythagoras to work that out. So what do we have? We have a 16.7 there, and we need this one at the bottom, let's call that A. So cos 43 equals adjacent. Oh, sorry, we can't use cos because we don't have the H yet. Let's scratch that. Let's use tan instead. Tan 43 is the opposite over the adjacent. So the adjacent is the opposite, which was 16.7 over tan 43. And to work out the hypotenuse here, we'll use sine 43 equals 16.7 over the hypotenuse. So h is 16.7 over sine 43. You could use Pythagoras using your adjacent you just calculated, but if you made a mistake down here, that would compound later on. So it's best to try and use sine because you're using a 16.7 and nothing you've calculated so far. So the perimeter will be 21.2 twice, the 16.7, not that 16.7 because that's not part of it, the A and the H that we've just worked out. So 16.7 plus 21.2 twice plus our H and our adjacent. So 16.7 divided by tan 43, 17.9. So that's 17.9. But I'm going to keep the full value in my calculator plus 16.7 over sine 43 plus 16.7 plus 21.2 plus 21.2. So the total is 101.49. 3SF is 101 centimeters. Okay, 80 taxi journeys, cumulative frequency. So we're going to go 7 plus 10 plus 12 plus 19 is 48 plus 18 is 66 plus 14 gives me 80. And you should just check that that is equal to what's given you in the question and then plot that. So we always plot the endpoints. Five, 10, so they're going up in fives. So we've got seven, 17. So five was seven, 10 was 17. And then 29, 48, 66. 29, 48, 66 and 80 to finish off. And then we would try and connect those with a smooth curve. I've missed a point there, so yours would go a bit better through that. And Calculate an estimate for the median. So 80 was the maximum. So the median would be 40.
about 16. And then the last question is interquartile range. So we go across at 20. That gives us about 11, 12. And across at 60. So that's going down 23. Okay, so that was 23, that one was 12. So the interquartile range would be those two subtracted, which is 11. Okay, here are two vectors. A to B is 6 minus 9. So A, go across 6 and down by 9, or minus 9. And C to B, that's B. C to B is 1, 3. So 1 across and 3 up. So if I go down another 3 and across 1. So C goes 1 and then 3 up plus 3 to get to B. How do I go from A all the way down to C? Well, if I went there, A across 6, I need to come back one to get to C. So that's a distance of five. And the total dis the vertical distance is the nine and the three. So that's 12. So I've got a triangle, which is five, 12. And the magnitude is the distance from A to C. So we use Pythagoras on that. So this is a five, 12, 13 triangle, but AC would be the square root of 5 squared plus 12 squared. 25 plus 144 is 169, and you square root to get 13. Make x the subject, and it's in two places, so we know we're going to factorize this. Um, let's get rid of the square root first, then multiply, oh, not x plus 3, x plus 1. Multiply through to clear the denominator. Expand it out. xy squared plus y squared equals 3x minus 2. Collect the x's all on one side. xy squared minus 3x equals minus 2 minus y squared. Factor the x y squared minus 3, and then divide y squared minus 3. Question 16 is a thirds question, and we have the root 2 for the final answer. So we know that we need to convert everything into root 2s. So the root 8 at the moment, I would choose a square number as a factor, the highest square number so that I can separate these and I get 2 root 2. So I can rewrite the top of the fraction as 4 plus 2 root 2. And to rationalize the denominator, we always multiply by the opposite root 2 plus 1. And when we do that, the denominator will become root 2 times root 2 plus root 2 minus root 2 so that disappears and minus 1 times plus 1 is just minus 1 so root 2 times root 2 is 2 minus 1 is just 1 so that will become over 1 the numerator will become 4 plus 2 root 2 times root 2 plus 1 as a double brackets. So 4 lots of root 2 plus 4 times 1 plus 2 root 2 times root 2. So that's 2 times root 4. I'll just write that out for now. Plus 2 root 2. So 4 root 2 plus 2 root 2 is 6 root 2 plus 4, plus 2 lots of root 4, 2 times 2 is 4. So that gives us 8 plus 6 root 
2. So a is 8 and b is 6. Question 17, y is directly proportional to the cube of x. So we write y equals k, that gets rid of the proportional sign, and we have x cubed. y equals 20h. when x equals h. So I'm going to replace x with h, and it's cubed. h does not equal to 0. So that just means we can't divide by 0. So I'll divide both sides by h cubed to get k equals 20h over h cubed. I can cancel one of the h's to get k equals 20 over h squared. Find a formula for y in terms of x and h. So y equals k x cubed. So we have 20 x cubed over h squared. Find x in terms of h when y is 67.5h. So y is 67.5h, and that equals 20x cubed over h squared. So we're just replacing the y with 67.5h. Rearrange this. 67.5h times h squared is h cubed. That's 20x cubed. Divide by 20, and I get 67.5 over 20. 67.5 over 20 is 27 over 8. So 27h cubed over 8 equals x cubed. So hopefully you can see that those numbers are kind of nice, because we take the cube root of everything separately. We have 3 cube root of 27, cube root of h cubed is just h, and the cube root of 2, uh, of 8 is 2. So x equals 3h over 2, or 1.5h. Question 18, we have a surface area and it's asking for the maximum, so that means there's going to be some differentiation in there. The surface area, let's work out the, the base, that one there, it's going to be x times x, and that matches the top, so we have 2x squared. Uh, this right hand side here would be x times 12 minus 3x. And there'll be two of those, because that'll be the left-hand side. And then if we do the front, that would be x times 12 minus 2x as well. So there's another two faces of that. So there's four in total of those x times 12 minus 3x's. So if we expand this out, we have 2x squared plus... 4x times 12 is 48x, minus 4x times 3x is 12x squared. So 2x squared minus that is, well, we'll do 48x minus 10x squared is the total surface area, which we're going to call that A. In order to find the maximum, we're going to differentiate this. So we're going to differentiate the area with respect to the length of its sides. And that will be 48 and then minus 10 times 2 and the x reduces by 1. So that's x to the power of 1. And whenever we want to find a maximum, we put the differential equal to 0. So I'll rearrange this to get 48 equals 20x. x equals 48 over 20, which is 
centimeters. So when x is 2.4, this will give you the maximum surface area of the cuboid. And it wants to know what that actual surface area is. So we have to substitute in our x value into our original equation, which was 48x minus 10x squared. 10x squared. So put that in our calculator, 48 times 2.4 minus 10 times 2.4 squared, 57.6 centimeters squared. ABCD is a quadrilateral. The area of triangle ACD is 250. So the area of that is 250. Calculate the total area of the whole thing. Okay, there's no right angles in here, just a bunch of triangles. So we're going to be using probably sine rule and cosine rule and half AB sine C, which is in the front. So the area of ACD is 250, and that's going to be equal to half AB. So this is A, this is B, because this is the angle here. So you need the two sides that are, that are next to that angle. So there's the two sides and the angle in between. So it's half 26 times B times sine of the angle in between them. That will allow us to work out what B is. Because once we've got B, we need to find another side, maybe this one here or this one. And we can use the same formula again to work out the area of that triangle. So let's find B times both sides by 2. 500 equals 26B sine 39. And I find B is 500 divided by 26 sine 39. So on the calculator, 500 over 26 sine 39, 30.5, 30.55. Keep that stored in your memory on your calculator. Now we have a triangle here with 47.95. So we can work out that side, uh, that angle there. 95 plus 47 is 142. So 38 degrees in there. And now we have that and one of the other sides. We can use the sine rule to work out any of the other sides that we like. So let's do uh, AB, this one here. Let's call that C. So C over sine 47, because that's the angle opposite, is equal to b which we do know we've already worked that out over sine 95 so c equals b sine 47 over sine 95 so our b which i stored in the memory times sine 47 divided by sine 95 is 22.43. So now that we have B and C, we can use the 38 degrees and we can use the area of a triangle to find out that. So area of ABC is half B C sine of A. So times that divided by 2 times sine 38 degrees is 211.03. OK, so I did half B times C times sine 38. And now I've worked out the two triangles areas 
I can add those together. So the 211 plus the 250 is 461 centimeters squared to 3SF. Okay, we have a curve and a line, and it's asking us about the intersections. That means we're going to do simultaneous equations, and one of them is a quadratic. So we're going to substitute for y, y equals 9 minus x. So wherever we see a y, we're going to substitute for 9 minus x, plus 2 lots of y, 9 minus x, squared. So we've got to expand that out and solve it. So x squared minus 27x plus 3x squared plus 2 lots of, so 9 minus x double brackets is going to be 81 minus 9x minus 9x plus x squared. So x squared plus 3x squared is 4x squared minus 27x plus two lots of 81 minus 18x times two, 36x plus two x squared. So we've got six x squared minus 27 minus 36 is minus 63 x plus 162 equals zero. Um, 3 goes into all of those, so 2x squared minus 21x plus uh, 54. And then we would use the quadratic formula and our calculators to solve that. So uh, menu A. We've got two, well, let's use the one before I did all the cancelling, just in case I made a mistake. And 162. X equals 6. And X equals 4.5. So our Y values for each of these was 9 minus X, if we remember. So 9 minus X is that. And for this, 9 minus 4.5 is 4.5. So our final values are 6, 3 for our intersections and 4.5, 4.5. Question 21, we have a cuboid and it's asking us for an angle. So this is 3D, Pythagoras and trig. The length of AB is in a ratio of 4 to 2 to 3. So let's call it 4x, bc is 2x, and cf is 3x. And we need to know the angle between af and the plane abcd. So that's going to go down to here and across there. That will give us our angle that we need theta. So hopefully you can see that we need the diagonal AC and we can then do tan. So the diagonal AC, AC squared is equal to 4x squared plus 2x squared, which is equal to 16x squared plus 4x squared which is 20x squared. So AC is equal to the square root of 20 and the square root of x squared is just x. So root 20x and root 20 is just 2 root 5. So now we have an uh, AC. Let's just draw this triangle here quickly.
I now have theta and 3x and 2 root 5x. So that 2 root 5x is going across that diagonal there. So I want to find theta and I have the opposite and the adjacent. So tan theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. And what you'll notice is that the x's cancel. So it doesn't matter what this length x is, it will disappear anyway. So theta is the inverse tan of 3 over 2 root 5. 33.854. So to one decimal place is 30. 3.9 degrees. Question 22, simplify this fully. Um, we have x in every term in the numerator, so I'm just going to pull that out first. And in the denominator, we have difference of two squares. We have two square numbers, 2x plus 5, and 2x minus 5. So that gives us a clue as to what the numerator is going to factor to because we've already got that on the denominator. So probably one of the brackets is going to be 2x plus 5 or 2x minus 5. So we can put a 2x and a 5 because we don't know the sign. That will allow us to work out the other bracket. So 3x there, 2x times 3x, and the 5 must multiply by the 1 there. So we want plus 13x, so we're going to have to have a plus and a plus there, I think, are we? Plus, no, we're going to have a minus there. So 6x squared plus, no, we're not. going to have it that way around. <laughs> we got there in the end. So 6x squared minus 2x plus 15x. Yes, that, that will work. So 2x plus 5 and 2x minus 5. So now we can cancel this with this and we're left with x brackets 3x minus 1 over 2x minus 5. Question 23, Boris has a bag that contains red sweets and green sweets only. Okay, the probability that Boris takes exactly one red sweet from the bag is 12 over 35. Originally, there were three red sweets in the bag. Okay, so three red sweets in the bag. So red is a three. We don't know how many green there are, but if we call x is the total, then green will be x minus 3. If we have a quick probability sketch, we can go red first, red, green, green, red, green. So having exactly one red sweet, we could go red and green or green and red so there's two different ways of doing that so we need to work out both of those and add them together so the probability of going red and then green would be red is five sorry red is three over x and then green would be x minus three and there would be one fewer in the bag. Probability of going green and then red would be x minus 3 over x multiplied by 3 over x minus 1 because there would be three reds and one fewer in the bag. So when we multiply these together we have 3x minus 3 over a common denominator of x brackets x minus 1. And the second one is also the exact same thing like that. So when we add those two together, 
we already have a common denominator. We have 3 over x minus 3 plus 3 multiplied by x minus 3, sorry, over x brackets x minus 1. So what we actually have there is 6 brackets x minus 3 over x brackets x minus 1. But you could multiply that out if you wanted just to double check that. So we've now worked out the probability of getting red green or green red and it tells us that that is equal to 12 over 35 so we can also put that equal to 12 over 35. We now have an equation which we can solve. So we're going to cross multiply 35 times 6 brackets x minus 3 is equal to 12 multiplied by x brackets x minus 1. 35 times 6 is 210x minus 3 lots of 210 is 630. And that's equal to 12x squared minus 12x. Rearrange this. 12x squared minus 12x minus another 210x is minus 2 to 2x and then plus 630 equals 0. Let's just double check that on the calculator. 12 minus 222 and 630. So our x value is x equals 15 or x equals 7 over 2, 3.5. Now, if we think about it, we can't have a half a marble or count or whatever it was, so we ignore this one. So the total number of, let's see what it is, sweets, sorry. Total number of sweets in the bag was x, which is 15, and the number of green sweets, which is what the question wants, was x minus 3. So x minus 3 will be 12 green sweets. Final question 24. Function f is such that f of x equals 3x minus 2. Find f of 5. So we just have to substitute 5 in for x. So wherever you see an x, you replace it with a 5. So 15 minus 2 is just 13. And then the final part is, is very tricky because we actually have a quadratic equation here. And when you do the inverse of a quadratic equation, you can't use the traditional method of just swap, swapping the x's and the y's around or, or whichever method you use. You have to actually complete the square first. Um, the reasons behind this are kind of beyond the scope of this, this video, but I'll show you at the end what it kind of looks like and we can get our head around it. But for now, if you ever see a quadratic and, and it asks you for the inverse, you have to complete the square. So g of x, let's complete the square by taking the 2 out as a factor, x squared minus 10x plus 9. And then we can complete the square on the brackets. So we're going to do x minus this thing halved. Then we subtract that thing squared, and we have the plus 9 that we originally had. So 2 x minus 5 squared, sorry, that 9 should be a 9 over 2. So minus 5 squared plus 4.5 gives us 2 lots of x minus 5 squared. Minus 25 plus 4.5 is minus 20.5. So now we can do two lots of x minus 5 squared. And let's multiply it by 2, actually. Let's get rid of that. And we'd have minus 41 there, because I've just distributed the 2 through the brackets there. So that's g of x now in its completed square form. So 
what we can now do is we can now let y equal 2 brackets x minus 5 squared minus 41. And we can do our usual replacing the x's with the y's. And we have to make y the subject. So we're going to do x plus 41 and then divide by 2 to give you y minus 5 squared. And then square root that to get plus or minus square root of x plus 41 over 2. That would equal y minus 5. So I'm going to add 5 to both sides to get y. So that's our inverse function there. 5 plus or minus. <laughs> that's, a, that's a horrible um, answer there. But if I just kind of show you what's going on with this, what we have is a quadratic graph with its uh, vertex at the opposite of minus 5 and negative 41 down there. So the graph would go something like this. And it's telling us, though, that x is greater than or equal to 5 in the question. So this is only actually, we're only interested in the right side of this graph. This bit here, we're not interested in. And that's because when you do an inverse function, you can only have a one-to-one -one relationship, which you, you kind of do more in A-level, but we can't have a many-to-one relationship like this quadratic here. And when we take the inverse, we reflect it in the line y equals x, and that 5 comma minus 41 would become minus 41 5. So something like that. And it would be a, a graph that kind of goes up like this. Okay, so our final answer when we look at this, we can't actually subtract anything from 5 because it starts at 5 here and becomes more positive. So we actually have to discount the minus sign and only have 5 plus root x plus 41 over 2 as our answer there and not have the negative one. So a very, very difficult finish there. Something that I've not seen in an IGCSE before is doing an inverse of a quadratic, but you have to complete the square before you do your inverse operations. And then there's a little bit there about why we can only do the five plus the square root. I hope that's been useful. If you have any questions, then please email me or let me know in the comments below. Good luck.